Three weeks ago, we said goodbye to our friend and senior associate, Monsignor Dan Ardnell. Some of you came to me and asked, what are we to do now? This past Monday, I met a very young inmate coming out of the parole office. He was denied the opportunity to go home, and I was called to meet him to tell him that his mother had died. And through his tears, he asked me, where am I going to go now? And just yesterday, I sat with another grieving inmate whose cousin had just completed suicide. He asked me, what about his soul? As I sat at my desk this morning, preparing this message for our Easter vigil, thoughts about what's been happening these days and these past few weeks were racing through my mind. And for some unknown, strange reason, an old country and western song came to mind. It was called Rose Garden, and it was sung by the late Lynn Anderson. The first two lines in that song go like this. I beg your pardon. I never promised you a rose garden. Along with the sunshine, there has to be a little rain sometime. How appropriate. How appropriate, too, I thought, for those lines to, work, to meet in our scripture readings. Throughout all of salvation history, in the reign of our sinfulness, the sunshine of God always shines through. Proof of that comes in fruition in the gift that God has given to us, the gift of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in his death and in his resurrection. St. Paul reminds us of that gift of sunshine, the light of Christ, in his letter to the Romans that we heard. He writes that as we were baptized into the life of Christ Jesus, we are also baptized into his death. We were buried with him into death so that just as he was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we also might live in newness of life. St. Matthew's Gospel reading tonight reminds us of that newness of life. But before that newness, there was the rain, there was the darkness. Those two Marys that we heard about in our gospel reading and all of Jesus' disciples no doubt witnessed the sunshine of Jesus. They saw the miracles he performed. They listened to the lessons that he taught. And he, they watched as he led them, not as a stern father, but he led them by example. But they also witnessed the rain, his trial, his rejection, his and his crucifixion. Our gospel tells of the report of these two women going to see Jesus' tomb. They experienced an earthquake. They saw an angel descend from heaven, and they watched as that stone that sealed that tomb was magically rolled away. No wonder they were afraid. Even the rough and tough guards sent seemed like they were dead. But then, came the good news. The angel proclaimed to the Marys, do not be afraid. He is not here, for he has been raised just as he said. And then the angel said to them, go quickly and tell his disciples. And they go. And along the way, Jesus meets them. Jesus meets them, and Jesus greets them. And the women they embrace his feet and did him homage. I can't even imagine the joy that they felt, the excitement that must have been in their hearts when they saw the one that they thought was dead was alive. Father Dan would sometime ask us in his homilies, what does all this mean for his disciples, us living in the 21st century? Well, you and I have experienced some great times in our lives. We've experienced weddings and parties, births of our children, baptisms, new jobs, new houses, new cars, time away, great vacations, on and on and on. But you and I have also experienced some darkness in our lives too. Some of us 
more than others. Loss of income, loss of jobs, families separated from one another, diseases, sicknesses, even deaths of loved ones. So what are we to do? What are we to do? As we come here at this Easter vigil, some 2,000 years removed from that very first day and the week of our Mary's experiences, I think there are three important lessons that we can take from them. First, to heed the words of the angel and of Jesus. Be not afraid. For those of you who know me, you've heard me say this countless number of times, and I will say it until the last breath comes out of my body. Be not afraid. Scripture gives us 366 times that very statement to be not afraid. To those who have asked me what we are going to do without Father Dan, I say, be not afraid. God gave us a good friend, a good priest, and a good leader, and he will raise up another man for that. To that young man who I had to tell his mother died after losing his opportunity to leave the prison, I told him the same thing, to be not afraid, that God would take care of him somehow, some way, and that may even include you and I helping out to take care of him. And to that poor man who lost his cousin through suicide and was so worried about his soul, I told him the very same message, be not afraid. Our God is a merciful God. The second thing I think we can learn from this lesson is to do what the angel told the Marys to do. Run and tell. Run and tell them about Jesus. And even though they were fearful yet overjoyed, they wasted no time in following the command of the angel. You and I, too, should do the very same thing, to run and tell the story of Jesus in our lives. Share with others how you not only see him in the light of your joys, but also in the darkness of our trials and tribulations. It's only been through personal witnessing that we have our faith are passed on to us this day. Without it, we may know nothing of Jesus and his love. And last, but certainly not least, like the Marys in our gospel, when we're approached by Jesus, we should go to him. We should embrace his feet and do him homage. We can honor this example in so many different ways, but one that I prefer is embracing others as I would Jesus himself. A wise woman in prison ministry many years ago shared with me a thought. She said to me, if you can't see Jesus in every eye of every person that you meet, especially prisoners, then there's something wrong with your vision, not theirs. I've taken that lesson to heart, and I've tried to live it each and every day of my life. Do you believe that we were promised a rose garden? Maybe not a rose garden, but God created for us a garden to live in forever, that garden of Eden. And we only left because of the darkness of our sin, that rain. But tonight we celebrate the new light, the new light of Jesus Christ, who leads us once again back to that garden if only we choose to do so. And the sunshine, the light of the world, Jesus Christ, has, is, and will always be there to lead us. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, he is risen, he is risen, he is truly risen. Be not afraid.